which is really fun. I said, I'm an education coordinator for a local sex shop called. So, thank you so much, Andrew, for being here with us today. I'm going to turn it over. Uh, I will be around afterwards. There's a few other people from the minutes around afterwards. If you have questions about send up polls or Andrew's um, letters in general, come back at the end and find us. We'll be able to talk about it.
Great. I think that's a nice little video just to kind of give a rundown of what happens in our body. And we're going to be talking a lot about the ECS, the endocannabinoid system, when we talk about sex. So you think I like that? Oh, yeah, thanks. Now, let's see. If I exit out of this, take us back to the presentation. Sorry, tech is not my strong suit. <laughs>
horny and going on a rampage. And so we, we take the THC out of the products, we strip it away, and we have CBD only. We have hemp products. And for a lot of people, those can be good. But cannabis works best when you're using the whole plant and when you're keeping it intact. And that means leaving the terpenes there as well. Terpenes are an oil, they're pungent, and they give cannabis their individual flavors. So whether it smells like lavender, whether it's citrusy, a uh, hoppy, berry mint, that's all down to terpenes and the flavonoids. Terpenes, in addition to giving that flavor and smell, they can also change how cannabis works in the body. So some terpenes can modify how much THC passes through the blood brain barrier. That means you can have two different joints, both of them sativa dominant, let's say, both of them THC content 21%. You might think, okay, these are gonna be pretty much the same, whether I smoke one or another, it's gonna have the same effect on my body because the THC is the same, they're both sativas. But it really depends on the terpene profile of something. Um, and one saying that really resonates for me is the nose knows. So a lot of times people will buy their cannabis uh, flower when they put their nose in and they go, mm, mm hmm And that's true of when you're using it for sex. Think about what kind of effect you wanna have. Do you wanna mellow out and slow down and relax with your partner? Well, then probably don't get something that's a zingy citrus because that's gonna be more energizing. Think about more of your lavender notes. Uh, if you do want something that's good, like, I have been tired lately, I really wanna pep it up, I wanna be able to last for a while, maybe getting something that is more energizing, like a sour. Uh, so trust your nose on that, and ask your bud tenders for feedback. We talked about how removing the THC completely can actually be helpful for some people if they're really sensitive to THC or if they're drug tested and they don't want any THC in their products. But ideally in your cannabis products for the best effect, especially for sex, we're going to leave in the CBD, THC, and the other cannabinoids and terpenes. Having all of those interact together, they call this the entourage effect. It's kind of like when nutritionists talk about when you eat a salad. If you think that your salad is healthiest just being full of vegetables without any dressing or fat added, you would actually be wrong. That's a misconception. You need some sort of fat to help your body get the nutrients, to help your body process all of the vitamins. And it's the same way with cannabis. If we have a little bit of THC added to a CBD product, we can actually get greater effects. Same thing if we have a THC product, adding a little CBD might mellow it out a little bit and make it more balanced. And all of luminous botanicals are going to have that balance either in there. Um, even their earth, which is the high CBD, has a tiny bit of THC in there because of this entourage effect. Now this I found on Leafly, it's a really neat chart. It's hard to see up close, but basically the center ring are issues that people might present with. And then you have your different cannabinoids around there, THC and CBD and all of the other minor ones. And then they tell you how those um, can help with different issues. So if your main issue, for instance, is epilepsy, then that could be helped specifically by these cannabinoids. And even cooler, on the back of that chart, is uh, all of your different terpene profiles. So in the center ring are some of the main terpenes that are found in cannabis. And they show you different things that you might want to use it for. So if you are experiencing inflammation, for instance, um, if you have chronic pain, it's in the way of your sex life. Then being able to find strains that match up with these terps can really help you pick something that's good for you. This you can find on Leafly's website and you can click it and actually make it big enough to see. Now modes of consumption are going to play a really big role too. So a lot of you probably know that if you smoke, it's a pretty immediate effect. Um, smoking and vaping has a very short activation time, whereas edibles can take a really long time. So if you're like, mm-hmm, you and my partner want to get down to business in about 20 minutes, let's take an edible right now. That edible might not kick in for two hours, especially if you've just eaten a big meal, also depending on your metabolism and how you digest things. 
So being aware that modes of consumption are going to set you up for success if you kind of match with what you're going for. So if you want to have a long lasting sex session where you're really zoned into your body, where you and your partner can just explore each other, maybe edibles would be great for that. If you're just using something like a joint, that might wear off after 15, 20 minutes. And hey, sure, maybe you could smoke again, but smoking's not necessarily great for everybody. Some people might prefer something like a vaporizer or using an oil, using a tincture, uh, and topicals. Topicals are another option. So if you're somebody who's worried about drug testing, you can use topicals as long as they're not on mucous membranes, they're not going to show up on a drug test. So you can rub them into the neck and shoulders, all over the body to help you relax, to help get blood flow going to the surface. If you do uh, use it in a mucous membrane, which includes the vagina, this can test positive. Um, so that's something to be aware of as well. But if that's not something you're worried about, having these products or any products that are topical, um, being able to enter the mucous membrane, especially through the vulva, is going to be super effective. You're going to find more of an effect if it's in your bloodstream than if it's just on top of your skin. So if what you're going for is arousal and more lubrication, putting a little bit of cannabis massage balm on your shoulders might feel nice on your shoulders, but it's not gonna do anything to get you more aroused, unless the actual massage part is arousing you. Does that make sense? Great. So, ask yourself these questions anytime you are considering using a cannabis with sex. Ask what your experience level is. Are you somebody who's very, very experienced or are you new to cannabis? If you're new to cannabis, you probably don't want to do a bunch of dabs. You're going to just cough, <laughs> you're going to fall on your ass, and then you're going to pass out, you're going to be like, oops, I didn't have sex. So, you know, know that about yourself. Yeah, ask if you have any preferences too. If you're like, I actually have asthma and smoking's terrible for me, don't feel like you have to smoke. There are other options. There are tinctures, there are tonics. Smoking out in the open is probably going to be better. And if you're going to share it, something uh, the same piece, more within the same amount of time. Whereas with edibles, that's something that is really dependent on the person. So you might know that your partner it takes two hours for edibles to kick in. For you, it's half an hour. If you want to be on the same page, it might take some trial and error. If you know that one person's a half an hour and one is two hours, then one person takes it at the beginning of the day and night, and one person takes it half an hour before, right? And then what are your intentions? Do you want to slow things down and explore? Do you want to have really energetic, frisky sex? Do you want to have a mind-melding, full-body experience, enhanced orgasm? Think about what you want and then try to find products that match that. Now, that video touched very briefly on how cannabis has been around for thousands and thousands of years. It's been a part of humanity for a very long time. In terms of sex, we have some evidence that it dates back to uh, ancient India, and they used it as medicine in a drink that was kind of like chai. It was a cannabis spiced chai called Bang, which it's called Bang. Come on. <laughs> Maybe that's where we get that term from. Uh, this drink was used in tantric sex rituals. So it was considered a very spiritual beverage. People would use it together as part of ceremony before they had tantric sex. And this you can still do today. There are still these ceremonies around as well. Now cannabis has been used across cultures too. It wasn't just in India. It's been used all across every continent except for Antarctica, although I'm sure it's being used there nowadays. Um, but in all of these cultures, it is considered an aphrodisiac. So if we've been knowing this for a very long time, this is not just new information we're finding out, it's just new stuff that we're allowed to talk about in groups of people in public. And yes, a lot of people use it for spiritual practices. So if sex is a spiritual thing for you, being able to use cannabis to heighten your uh, spiritual experience is an option as well. Now, there are many benefits, as you can tell. I wouldn't be teaching this if it was all just a bunch of garbage side effects, right? There's a lot of benefits, but we should be aware
aware of the side effects and the benefits at the same time so that you don't go in with a sense of everything is going to be perfect and wonderful. I think it's important that we know in any kind of sex what we're getting into. I want to talk about some of those benefits and then I want to talk about some of those side effects. So benefits. It can make us more sensitive to sexual feelings and urges. If you're a person who uh, maybe like me, I became a mother last year and my brain has not been focused on sex uh, in the last few months, except for the few times when I've used cannabis. And then I'm like, right, I'm a sexual being. I would totally go for sex right now. Uh, so it kind of gets me back in touch with my urges. It reminds me that I have a libido, that I'm a sexual being. So that's really helpful. Um, it can also work on a physiological level to help with arousal, so vasodilator, so it can increase blood flow. That can increase blood flow into the whole body, which can make you more sensitive to being touched, really livens those nerve endings. And it can also get more lubrication going, more blood flow to the genitals. Some people, sex can be intimidating, or people can get nervous, or they just get uh, inhibited for whatever reason. Maybe they have the voice of society in their head telling them, that what they're interested in is weird, or that their body doesn't look good enough. Shut that voice off. It can say like, hey, I'm lovely the way I am. That can really help people tune into themselves and their partners. It can also improve your mood, and I will say from experience, it can improve the mood of your relationships. If you've ever had a fight with a partner, you're just like, no, I don't, I don't want to have a fight with I'm, I'm too angry with you and then you use cannabis together, like you might forget why you were mad at them after it kicks in. You'll be like, oh, actually, I'm sure whatever we're fighting about is not that big of a deal. Now, I'm not saying replace uh, therapy or conversations with cannabis, but I am saying sometimes what feels like a big deal that makes us want to not connect, once we're able to be in our body and out of our brains, we're like, oh yeah, this is a person I really adore who I want to connect to. It can also help with creativity, which a lot of people know. People get high, they make music, people make art, but we could also get high and make love. We can get more creative in the bedroom and try new things. Maybe something that we've always been a little nervous to try, we have the boldness now with the power of cannabis to get a little bit different in the bedroom. Try some role playing perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> so cannabis can also decrease pain. And this can decrease pain all over in the whole body. Uh, I'm a person who suffers from fibromyalgia, so cannabis has been my medicine and helps me feel less creaky and achy and sore all around. But it can also help with pain during penetration, uh, vaginal and anal penetration. And that's true of whether you use it topically or whether you ingest it. And we'll talk a little bit more about how it works topically when we get to the topic. So we've already talked about how it can increase intimacy, feelings of fondness, feelings of connection, which is really important. But that goes beyond just those feelings with our partners. A lot of people use cannabis for masturbation as well. So it's something that I really encourage, especially before you use it with a partner, to try using it on your own to see how it impacts you, to see how different strains might do when you're in different moods and which ones really work well for your own personal libido. It can also increase body love and confidence. I was just talking to the bartenders before this and they had recommended a strain um, called Emerald Daiquiri that they both really like for calming the anxiety they feel before sex and giving them that body boost. So that might be one worth checking out um, or other ones that are similar. People also report that they can feel a body buzz, so a tingling through the body, which can really make sex feel uh, completely blissful, euphoric. People can often feel like their orgasms last a longer time or that they're a full body orgasm. In fact, 52.8% of people in a study that was done just last year, they reported better orgasms with cannabis. So that's a pretty large percentage of people. Um, and actually, when I say people, I should specify that that study was done for people with vulvas. So people with vulvas report uh, better orgasms with cannabis much of the time. And for other folks, they might find that they last longer. Or maybe they just think they do because cannabis alters perception of time. <laughs> but if you're both on it, <laughs> 
get inebriated and then try to play because you're not able to give informed consent, you might not be in your right mind. But I think there's a difference between getting completely smashed, like drunk on seven Jaeger bombs versus smoking a joint with your partner. Or even doing dabs with your partner who you've known for a long time, who you've talked in advance about using cannabis with sex and it's very intentional. I definitely don't recommend using cannabis for pickup play. So if you're going to a sex party with a bunch of strangers, don't show up high. Don't get stoned while you're there. This is more about using with people who you know and trust and where you have some experience yourself. And it's not about using so much that you can't consent or even feel what's going on. I think that consent can happen with using substances as long as people know their limits and they're talking about it in advance. Great. All right, so how we maximize all these benefits we just talked about, how do we minimize some of these side effects? Like I just said, talk before using cannabis together. Talk about your expectations, what you want to get out of it, what happens if someone's starting to get real sleepy when they're using. What can you do to pep things up? Um, some people will do things to interact or to, um, to kind of take back the effects of cannabis. So once you're really, really high, especially with something like an edible, you're probably gonna just have to ride that wave for a while. But let's say you smoked a joint, you got a little too high. Uh, you can always just wait it out. You can do things in the meantime to stay connected. So you can do things like massage, you can have intimate conversations, whatever your uh, love language is, whatever things help you stay aroused, you can do things that are not sex to stay connected if you're feeling too high until things start to wear off. Again, know yourself, know your consumption, and then keep a diary. So a lot of people keep a dream diary when they have interesting dreams. I keep a cannabis diary. So when I, and then if I use that during sex and intimacy, I talk about how it was for me. Maybe I'll write, OMG, world's best orgasm. Maybe I'll have gotten a kush from the store. I end up falling asleep. Hmm, maybe I did not get a kush. So you start noticing patterns when you do the diary. So I think that could be really helpful. The universal doing what your um, dosage is. So saying like, this time I tried a tire dropper. Last time I did a quarter of a dropper. These were my effects. And you can kind of get an idea now so that you can really be precise what you want to use for the best effects. But you can masturbate and use these things solo before you use them with a the partner to really get a good idea without having to worry about ruining the moment or ruining the mood. And again, have lube candy. Like, I will write lube on every slide of every presentation I do because that's how much I believe in lube. So it's worth mentioning again. And then when we talk about intentions, I think it's really important to, however you're using cannabis, whether it's for sex or sleep or health, to set intentions beforehand. So ask what kind of outcomes you want to achieve. If what you want to achieve is, I'm going to masturbate and I want to have a full body orgasm. Set that intention in your brain, consume your product, and then take immediate aligned action. Immediate aligned action means don't consume the product and then be like, oh, it's going to be a while before it kicks in. I'm going to go do some laundry. Oh, hasn't kicked in yet. I'm going to go play a video game. Find action. This might look like consuming and then crawling into bed or lighting candles around the room, putting on your uh, aromatherapy diffuser, getting a scent that feels really nice, putting soft fabrics in there, laying out all your sex toys. Once you set that intention, you're going to set yourself up for way more success than if you go and distract yourself. And then, Trust the plant. So like I said earlier, if the cannabis is making you fall asleep because you're sleep deprived, it's because it's trying to help your body get what it needs most. Now, if your body needs the orgasm the most, it's gonna help your body get that orgasm. Trust it, trust the plant. Are there any questions so far? Great, so let's talk about how we can share cannabis with a partner because so shotgunning, simple, um, it's what they're doing in this photo. It's where you, uh, usually this is great for people too, if um, someone has the baby lungs like me with my asthma, like I can't take big dabs, I can't smoke in a joint directly or I start coughing. So my partner will do that part and then blow into my mouth while I inhale. 
That way our lips are really close together. It's very sensual sharing the smoke. I get less of an intense hit from it, but we're sharing the same product. We're feeling the same vibes. The activation rate is going to be pretty similar. So shotgunning can be a really sensual, fun experience. You can also go out for tasting. Because, you know, people go to wine country and they do the little like, let's swirl it and sip it and spit it out. Or drink it if you're like me because I'm not going to waste money on spitting it out. <laughs> All right. But you can do tastings with cannabis. Now, you can't go into a dispensary here and like smoke. In other states, you can get a little bit and try it in the back room. But here, it's going to be more about looking at it, smelling it, talking about it together. Like, oh, I really have some floral notes I'm detecting in this. How about you? That smells like spaghetti sauce to me. Well, is that a good thing or not? You know? So talking about it, and I think it's a really fun way to get to know each other and to learn strains that you might enjoy together. You can also cook with it. You can make desserts with it. Cook together and then consume it together. It can be a really fun date night. You can get high and then get creative. And this can be sexually or not sexually. Sometimes getting creative in other ways leads to getting creative sexually, especially if you're an artistic couple. Um, get naked and just like paint a mural. Or, you know, if that you don't have a wall to randomly paint a mural on, like you can paint each other's bodies. You can uh, use food and lick it off of each other. Get creative with ideas. Do some role playing. Maybe you're like, you know, I've always wanted to do the teacher-student thing, but I thought it was a little too cliche. But in this moment, with this cannabis in me, I want to try it. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to put my own creative spin on it. And so you can do these things, trying new things, getting creative with cannabis. Uh, oral sex is also awesome with cannabis. I want to ask for a show of hands, but I feel like maybe that's, I don't know. I'm going to have us close our eyes and protect each other. Somebody to look up at me and say your dick got me high. Like it is such a good feeling. Um, 
Um, so definitely for oral sex, definitely for hand jobs, cannabis can be awesome. Anal sex. I teach an entire class about anal sex called Back That Ass Up Anal Sex. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my God. it's an hour and a half class, so I'm not going to go in depth on it. But my three main takeaways from anal sex are communicate, use lube, and go slow. And going slow and communicating uh, and using lube are going to be your three main things. But for a lot of people, that's not enough. They try that and there's still some pain or discomfort. That's an area of the body that holds a lot of tension. There's a lot of societal taboo. Um, for a lot of people, any sort of anal penetration, um, unless they're experienced with it, their body tenses up. Um, there's this, okay, so, so there's this uh, method that I tell people, which is called the doorbell method for when you're going to insert something into a butt, which if this is the anus here, you take your finger and you go, ding, bong. <laughs> 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 you can choose to make the noise or not. <laughs>
And then you have the sky, which is the high THC blend. So that was going to be more energizing for most people and uh, arousing, <clears throat> invigorating. Great. Now, beyond that, if you're more of a smoker, if you're more of a person who uses vapes or edibles, these are some of the strain recommendations. I did a lot of research on High Times, Leafly, and I talked to some local bud tenders. Um, these ones are kind of in the research, what I was finding were what people said over and over again. Like, I use this for masturbation, or we use this on vacation, and it was great. And it was funny how, I don't know if people were reading other people's and then responding that worked for me too, or if these just really do tend to work best for these particular things. But like Girl Scout cookies, people said was really great for solo sex. Um, Jilly Bean is one that can be really great for kinky creative sex. It kind of gets people in that creative mindset. As I mentioned out here, Emerald Daiquiri is an anti-anxiety and confidence boost one that they recommend. They, because of the society we live in, often don't make them that are specific for like orgasm. Like it's not going to stay on the side of the box. Like this is good for getting your rocks off. I wish that made it simpler. Um, except for there's one called Sex Pot that was made for orgasm, but that's you can really only get in California. But otherwise, you know, get creative. Uh, ask the bud tenders what type of thing you want to go for. So if you want to slow down with your partner and have more like tantric sex where you're connecting with each other and it's a spiritual experience, or do you want to have some quickies? Do you want to feel tingly and a body buzz? Maybe you want something like Northern Lights in that case. And a lot of these strains come in either flower, uh, cartridges, or in um, edible form. Out there when I was talking to them, they said that like Northern Lights, they have um, as an edible right now. So that could be a really fun experience if you want to have those full body orgasms. And if these particular ones aren't things that you can find, knowing what about them makes them special. So like Harlequin, for example, one reason that's good for morning sex is because it doesn't have a lot of THC. It's more of a, a CBD um, or indicas, something that's not going to get you too high to go to work, for instance. So that's why it can be good for morning sex. Uh, if you don't have Harlequin, then finding another one, uh, a CBD strain would be a good option. For a lot of people for sex, if you have no idea, if you haven't tried using any before, a lot of people will start off with an indica dominant. Um, something like a Kush can work really well because it can keep people present in their body. It can shut off the brain from doing all of the distracting or talking about like societal body images. It'll just get you kind of in your body and connected with your partner. But you might notice, like if you're doing your diary like I do, that a Kush might make you tired. Um, CBDs might make you tired. For me, anytime I use CBD, I'm like, okay, I want to sleep now. It's my dream zone. So I don't tend to use those a lot during sex unless it's topically. But everybody's ECS is different. So do some experimentation. See what works for you. Definitely ask a bud tender if you have questions. They're super knowledgeable. So even if they don't know like specifically which one's great for orgasm, they might be able to tell you which one can uh, be good for focus. They might be able to lead you into a product that can be great for paying attention to detail or for slowing down. So explore, explore, explore for sure. Now I wanna talk about some extra credit in this little bit of time we have left here. BDSM and cannabis. So BDSM, bondage, discipline, dominance, submission, and sadomasochism. It's an umbrella term that covers all sorts of kinky activities. Using any sort of substance when you're doing BDSM is more of a risk. BDSM is already a higher risk activity than vanilla sex. Obviously, because if you're buying somebody up, you can cut off blood flow or do nerve damage. If you're doing a power exchange, that can be triggering for people. Um, if you go too far for someone, it might become non-consensual. Uh, you know, if there's pain, if there's impact, like hitting somebody with a flogger or a crop, you don't want to be out of your mind doing those things. So you have to be very especially intentional when you're combining BDSM and cannabis. But I'm not the kind of person who's going to say, I don't think it should happen at all. 
I know many people who do it and do it successfully. And the reason it's successful is because of these four things. So RAC, risk aware consensual kink. Knowing your risks in advance, being very educated about those risks and talking about them when you're sober, when you're not using. Making sure you talk about consent before participating in kink as well. Setting up your limits when you don't have any substances in your body. So saying what your hard limits are, saying, uh, you can hit me up until I say my safe word. Um, we can do degradation, but these words are off limits. These words might be triggering to me. You can tie me up, but I only want my wrists tied up or my arms tied up. I need my legs to be free or else I'm gonna feel too panicky. Talk about these things in advance and then definitely stick with them. And I highly recommend that the top or the dominant is not playing with substances um, and that the, the submissive can as long as they're still within uh, being able to consent and control their no. Now if the top is using again we want it to be something where they know their limits they know how they react and I would not do any high risk activities. No rope suspension. We're not going to suspend somebody from the ceiling with rope when we're high or when we're stoned right but putting somebody in fuzzy handcuffs connected to the bed that you've done a million times before, okay, we can probably handle that. They, are, they don't even have a key. All you do is pull them up like a belt to release them. That seems like a little bit of a lower risk thing. So kind of thinking about ways that you can accommodate as well. Now, trust in yourself, trusting your own no, trusting in your partner is crucial. And how much experience do you have in playing? Are you new to BDSM? then maybe do it for a while before you introduce cannabis. If you've been doing BDSM for a while and you want to incorporate cannabis, start very small with micro dosing and see how you do first. I really think this is a dip your toe in the water and work your way up to it type of thing, not a go all out because going all out just feels a little too risky as an educator to recommend to people. So being aware of all the safety there and having everything you need laid out in advance too. Because even if you're like a little bit uh, out of the ordinary, maybe you've got a little bit too much cannabis in your system, you don't want to be using that time to be like, oh no, where did I put the safety scissors? You're in rope bondage right now and you're uncomfortable and I'm gonna have to try to undo this knot. And I'm gonna be sitting there and it's gonna feel like both for both of us is taking two hours. No, have your safety scissors nearby, have all of your safety supplies and everything you might need right there to make your life easier and to feel like you have that sense of safety around you. That also helps people relax when they know that they're prepared in advance. Now something that's positive about all this, I just gave you all the risks and uh, kind of an overview of things to look out for and things to do to prepare yourself. But one of the positive things about combining cannabis and BDSM is that it can get people into altered states, which for a lot of folks, kink, that's the purpose of it for them, is to get them into an altered state. A lot of people use BDSM and components of BDSM like a drug in the brain. So for a lot of folks, um, the endorphins that are released when they're going through a scene can get them into a space that is called subspace, or you can get into a dom space, a top space as well, where you feel altered, where maybe you feel very powerful, or where you feel Affiliated, but that is worse to you personally. Uh, these are all that effect. If you're somebody who's always wanted to experience something, want to get to that space, uh, being able to explore. It's like when I talked about uh, meeting God during that orgasm. Like I had never met God before. My brain would not let me get to that point of where I felt like I was just um, part of this expanded universe and that my orgasm was just a part of like what created the planet. I don't know, it was definitely <laughs> But that happened after I started with um, giving a blow job and really feeling like way more submissive than I normally allow myself to be um, because my brain was shut off from me thinking like, well, as a feminist, like what is it like to have a partner with a penis to dominate me? Like, shut up brain, just give head and get into it. And sure enough, it's like some of the best head that I ever gave, it was a really great experience. And then when it was my turn to get cunnilingus, 
and I had that orgasm and it was so powerful. It was definitely like that spiritual experience. I was definitely in a space that everybody who has ever been in subspace described to me that they felt. So I was like, oh, I did it. I wasn't able to do that through regular BDSM, but with the help of cannabis, I was able to get there. So it could be worth exploring for people who are a little kinky or who at least want to try to be a little kinky. But again, keep the risk aware, consensual kink in the back of your mind at all times. Awesome. You're like, okay, well, let's wrap it up so I can go home and try this. <laughs> I'm wondering what questions you have for me. Let's use the uh, the last 15 minutes here to do questions. So this could be about anything sexual. Um, sex and cannabis, obviously, is totally on topic today. But if you have any sex questions, now is your chance. You have a sex educator in front of you. Yes. So um, you were talking about how sensual cannabis lubes may or may not work as well for people who have penises. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering your thoughts on, this is something that we've talked about at Luminous, um, what are your thoughts on how dependent that is on circumcised versus uncircumcised? Um, well, I, I'm definitely not done like a scientific study <laughs> that would by any official means get into a journal. But through my experiences, um, I find that using cannabis and just like oils in general on uncircumcised penises tends to be a little bit easier because of like the built-in um, sheath that can help with hand jobs. But I haven't found that there's like a difference between how people report whether they're um, circumcised or uncircumcised and how much they feel it. But that also might be a difference between each individual is more different than circumcised versus uncircumcised. So like there could be an uncircumcised person and a circumcised person who feel it really similar. Um, and then somebody with more similar genitals to them might feel it completely differently. I think it probably depends more on their ECS, but I don't know. What Have you all found any <laughs> anecdotes at least, if not research? We have not started the research program yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please hire me as a lead scientist. We would love to. I just, I, just, I just wonder, thinking it through out loud, whether having, uh, on an uncircumcised penis, having the head, the glands of the penis covered a lot of the time and not kind of getting scar tissue or thicker tissue um, might help with absorbing into that mucous membrane. Yeah, I could see it both ways. I mean, like, as a general rule, usually people who don't have uh, foreskin tend to have less sensitivity on the head of their penis because it's being rubbed against or tucked under jeans or like for many days or like behind a notebook in middle school. Like so, <laughs> something's always like pushing up against that skin, which after a while, like it just kind of becomes desensitized because the, it's exposed to touch all the time. Whereas somebody who has a foreskin um, that's going to the head of their penis is often more sensitive because the foreskin kind of protects it during the day. And then when it's exposed, it's like, oh, I'm about to get open, um, which doesn't happen as much. So maybe people with a foreskin might feel it more intensely because of having more general sensitivity. But also, if you're just putting it on the whole penis on the outside of the foreskin where it can get behind that barrier as well, they might not feel it as much. So I would absolutely love to do this as a, as a study. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next year, this is what we're gonna be presenting. There we go. <laughs> right. uh, what other questions do folks have? Yeah. If somebody is a little too high from an edible, um, what about vaping or CRCB? Would that help quickly sober? There are certainly a lot of people who do that, um, trying to balance something, um, especially with an edible when it can be so, like you have no idea. Fortunately now, we, it's a lot easier than when we were at parties and we just like eat a cookie and be like, ah, I have no idea how much is in there. Now we can like dose ourselves, it's a little easier. But still, sometimes people are like, oh, that was delicious. I ate four of them, probably shouldn't have done that. Um, really like the only tried and true way to get back to um, like level is to just wait it out. But certainly I know plenty of people who will vape a high CBD uh, and that can mellow a lot of people out. So I think it's worth trying certainly. Um, 
there's not really, it shouldn't add to the high in that way. Um, but again, you'd want to check your, your terpenes and stuff to see if that might be actually intensifying things. I'd say for most CBD products, it, it would be more helpful than Uh, in your experience and, and the experience of the folks you work with, has anyone ever been using the high THC uh, central oil ever had any issues with anxiety or paranoia like like has been associated with smoking that? Uh, my partner has kind of low tolerance for THC. There's a lot of anxiety and paranoia associated with like high THC stuff, but uh, that is it, it seems like a pretty cool product. But I was just wondering if, if that's something you've experienced or for anybody you've worked with. Are you talking about using it topically yeah. or ingesting? So, well, on a mucus membrane topic. But. Yeah, so I have not found that using it topically um, really impacts anxiety. Uh, for some people, they might feel overstimulated in in the area where it was put. Like, oh, wow, it feels very, like, there's a lot of blood flow going there. I'm very sensitive to touch, maybe, something like that. But in terms of, like, anxiety and feeling nervous or paranoid the way that a lot of people can feel when they ingest THC, I don't think that that really happens. Because it's not working in the same way in the brain, and it's not as direct. You know, if you're putting something down in your genitals, it's going to, it would have to be a very large amount for it to have the same effect as it would if you were eating it or smoking it. Touch on that. Yeah. I'm a massage therapist who does cannabis massage, and I have a lot of folks come in who are concerned about the THC reaching the blood system in order, like, for dropping for drug tests and or because they're sensitive to it's like lack of high. And from what the research I've done, that you can't get psychologically high from the THC topically because it doesn't actually reach the bloodstream. Is that true? Unless you add heat or, like, if you were to get into a bath afterward or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think that you'd have to have quite a bit. Like, there was a person on the internet, which definitely worth reading. I think it was on, uh, like, Auto Straddle. But somebody basically took a, a syringe, like a plastic syringe, and filled it with an oil. It was in California, so it wasn't due. But they filled it with essential cannabis oil and inserted it all the way into the vagina, like a huge syringe full. And they definitely like got too high to be able to leave the house. But it was a massive quantity. Um, and it was going up into the body. So you know, like it is possible. I'd say during a massage, is keeping things external? No, it's not gonna really be able to reach. But maybe Devin be able to speak more to the science of that. I mean, I think in theory, it's actually possible. Cannabinoids have to pass through the skin barrier, but a lot of products have penetration enhancers to help drive cannabinoids through the skin, into the body, into the muscles, into the joints, the tissue where you're looking for the relief. Um, it's not usually enough to be inebriated or to really even feel it, but from personal experience, I can tell you I got super high once through my hands when I was making a salve and I was wringing out a, uh, a, a mesh bag that was full of cannabis and hot oil and my hands were really hot and the pores were all open and I was just wringing it as hard as I could so there was a lot of blood flow through the tube and yeah, I absolutely sure. felt the high yeah. come through my body, through my hands. Through yeah, because from what I've read, the temperature is definitely what allows it in more. And it like definitely. CB1 receptors, which is your CB2. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Awesome, thank you. Yeah. What other questions? I'm just gonna ask about the shotgunning. For somebody that uh -huh. likes to smoke but can't smoke, like how effective is it for the shotgunning technique like for like joints or for calves or for things like that, um, for doing that with the partner? Like how effective is it for the, the second Yeah, person? for the receiving end. It's, it's very effective. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've seen, I've, you know, I've, I've heard mixed things over the years, I just didn't yeah. know, and so. I mean, it depends on how big of a hit someone's taking. Like if they are taking a dab, and they just take a little bit into their own body first and then they blow the rest out and a partner breathes it in, that's going to be really effective. Um, they're going to definitely feel like they did a dab, but maybe without the intense coughing because they didn't take that first hit right. and have the heat directly on their mouth first. Um, so it's kind of a way of getting like a little bit less, but you certainly can still feel it. Now, if someone's just taking like a little uh, pop off of a vape pen, and then they blow it into your mouth, that might not 
be able to go as far. So I think it depends on the product and the mode of consumption. And something like a flash vaporization, like dabs and extracts that are <clears throat> known to be more powerful are gonna be more powerful secondhand than something like a, a blunt or a fake blow pen that don't pack as much of that punch. Or like a pack that's such a mellow, smooth hit that like you really have to take kind of a big hit to be able to get that into somebody's system as yeah. effectively. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Well, if you come up with more questions, I have business cards back there on the table. You can always email me your questions. Uh, I'm at amoryjane.com. You can send me questions through my contact form. And if you want to attend any of my other upcoming events, they're all listed on there, amoryjane.com slash events on my website. Thank you all. Justin, Justin finally made it. Okay, so hey, we're headed off to the next one. Don't know what it is next. Thanks, guys.